Greetings, Mechie 104 This is a video about uh, basic video editing. I'm actually going to show you how to use the most fundamental features of this program, HitFilm Express. Um, let me start by saying you don't have to use this program, but we do kind of recommend it. It has uh, some very nice features. We're only going to scratch the surface of them, but it will do everything that you need to do uh, for your final project video. You are certainly free to use other things if you like. I know if you're on a Mac, you could probably have easy access to iMovie. Um, there are other programs that are available, some for free. Most have some sort of uh, a payment for them, it turns out. Even those that have a payment, in many cases, you can get a free trial, but sometimes that comes with watermarks and so forth. So uh, we want you to definitely have a video that does not have any watermarks or anything like that that's kind of cluttering it up. So if you don't have other options, this hit Film Express is a great one. You'll have to go to fxhome.com, create a uh, account in order to download the, the program to install and so forth, but it's fairly straightforward. And we will give you some information about that on the My Courses site. What I'm going to do is show you the basics of creating a video, much like I've created for Mechie 102 Engineering Mechanics Lab. If you've been in that course, you've seen some of those videos. I did not use Hit Film Express for those. I use a different program called Camtasia, but that is a paid program. Um, doesn't matter though, it's still the same basic idea. Uh, I'm putting together uh, photos that I've taken as well as video. There's some sound in some cases, I, not in any of those videos for Mickey 102, but there will be here. Um, there's overlaid text and things like that. So basically what you're going to do, what you're creating is you are going to be using images and videos that you've taken to put together to tell the story that you're asked to do to document your design and the and the functioning of your of your project um, with what you choose to do as far as text overlays and and speech and things like that. Uh, to get started, let me point out a few things. I have already in a folder a number of photos. So here I'm showing you photos I've taken of this uh, cart from Vernier. This is a so-called uh, curvilinear uh, motion and energy investigation. So there's pictures of a track that, that uh, we built and used. Some other features of the um, components. I have uh, three videos I've taken. One that was a, actually a screen capture of using the software for the cart. And then a couple of just testing the car on the track. And I have a storyboard here I'll show you in a minute that I created. Now, the idea is I knew, obviously, I was making this video, so I just took a bunch of pictures that I thought I could use. I had an idea of what I was going to do with it, but I took a bunch of photos and, and also videos. You should have these things at this point, too. You will have a bunch of photos. Hopefully, you will have a bunch of videos. Hopefully, at the very least, the video of your, of your project working, or hopefully working or attempting to work. You may also have other screenshots, say, from the CAD program or s snippets from that sort of thing. Whatever, the point is you assume that you've got a collection of that kind of stuff that you want to put together to tell some story. <clears throat> I uh, will also show you this storyboard that I created in Microsoft Word. It's probably not a true storyboard. It, it's an outline, really, is what I should say. Um, and so I've just here in a table put together the flow of what I want to tell in my video. So I always start out with an introduction, like a general introduction script. Um, so on the left is kind of what I want to do or, or actual um, script things I want to say. And then on the right column are the pictures or things I'm going to draw from. So in this case, the very th first thing I will do is create some text here which shows, um, well, what the video is about. Gives the, some of the contact information, if you will, to the, the context here, Mickey 102, uh, mechanical engineering, RIT, it's the curvilinear motion energy investigation, and so forth. And you can see as I go down here, I, I just give given uh, captures of the different images that I've taken that I intend to include in the video and then what I intend to say with that. So I'm just going to kind of append these uh, one after the other in this sort of order. So this is in some cases quite detailed of exactly what I want to say and um, pretty much the picture I want to show. Although there could be some adjustments as I go along. I'm not saying this is cast in stone. I may decide as I'm doing it to say something different or... Uh, maybe do something a little different with the picture or add some stuff to it. But this is, for the most part, the, the basic flow of it. And then uh, further down here, I've got some video clips I want to show. And in one case, I've got a fairly long video that I want to just take parts of that I've, I've already uh, reviewed ahead of time here and decided that the rough time 
frame that I want to use. So about the first 34 seconds to begin with. And now that same video, I don't know how many that is there, the next one there. And then I've got an outro, which I just put up the typical kind of copyright statement, my name and things like that. So this is going to serve as my guide for as I put things together in the software. You can get more specific information about uh, maybe some of the background settings of the video you should create and things like that on the My Courses site for 104. Let me switch back to HitFilm Express and it comes up with this, uh, well, fairly uh, um, busy screen to begin with here. But the first thing I'm going to do is at the very top left, click on New. And it comes up with some project settings, a 1080p full HD at 25 frames per second. At least that's what came out the default my, on, on my system as a template. I'm just going to take that and, and accept it, say OK. You're not beholden to that. Um, this is just the, the basic structure behind it. Uh, when all is said and done and we've built up what we want, the sequence of things and so forth, we will export a video and you can pick specific settings at that point. Um, let me go back for a minute here because this is probably not the way you'll see it when you first start. Probably what you'll see is something like this. Your colors may be different. The layout might be a little different depending upon your computer, depending upon your OS and things like that. If you've watched the LinkedIn Learning series that we've posted for a couple of weeks now, you should have some familiarity with this. Even if you've not watched those, I'm hoping that what you see will make a, a little bit of sense. The basic concept is right now as it shows this trimmer at the top left it's empty right now but eventually that will be a place where we can see some of our uh, videos and things like that that we brought into the program and do some manipulations before we actually use them the viewer at the top right right now on the top right is just where we can preview what we set up there's a bunch of controls on the bottom left the media effects and things like that that will come back to as we're working um, probably one of the most important windows here for, for understanding the, the kind of the configuration setup of things is the editor. It has what's called a timeline here. It's a bar. Actually, you can drag out here uh, what's called the playhead. At least it's called that in other programs, I imagine, is here too. You can see there's a timer that goes along with that. That's how we'll move back and forth in the timing in the video. So there's nothing in here right now. And so to drag this out and indicate time doesn't mean much, but it will eventually. It's various tools that show up here. There are these tracks they're called an audio, one audio and one video track right now. I'll show you the purpose of those, but I think you can kind of get the notion that's where your video and it turns out images will reside in the, the video track and there can be multiple video tracks. There can be multiple audio tracks and that's where the audio information will reside. So to get started here, I like to rearrange things a bit. It helps if you have a bigger monitor when you're doing these things. If you have multiple monitors, that's even better. I like to arrange this a little bit differently. If you, on any one of these tabs, or you get the little hamburger looking thing here, the, the icon, if you click on that with your mouse button, you can say float panel. And so you could actually move this around. I only have the one screen here to record, so I'm not going to do anything more special uh, with this. But then the reason I did that is now I'm going to come back and click at the, at the right where it shows a little grid where it says dock. And when I do that, the only thing it did is it just shifted that over to the to the right of the screen. And I like it there because there's, I have a lot of things that are going to appear in these different tracks and it's easier for me to see them more vertically spread out. Let's crunch this trimmer and the video together. So another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I'm going to click and hold on the tab that says trimmer. And you can see it moving. I'm going to stick it so that it appears in the same little box as the viewer and then this export tab, which right now, let me clear that out because I was using that before. Um, you'll likely see it like this blank to begin with. I don't ever need to see the trimmer and the viewer at the same time. So that's why I don't need them to have them separated out. So I find this to be, for me, a little bit easier. It exposes a few more tabs down here on the bottom left. You can do however you like with this. I'm going to do one other thing here, though. On this, uh, I'm not sure what this little sub window is called here. This I'm going to go again to, and you see these little. There's little pop-ups everywhere. There's there's a a million little um, icons you can click on for different tools and so forth. And I, I appreciate that could be kind of daunting at first. But again, I just want to emphasize we're not using everything here. I'm not necessarily showing you the most efficient or even probably the best way to do certain things. I'm trying to show you what is the fundamental set so it's not too weighed down with too much information. I am going to turn on here though, um, add panel. 
and I'm going to say layout because that that particular tab gives you the ability for items are going to place you'll see in a minute and eventually in, in the video easily align them to the centers and things like that so if you recall from my storyboard the first thing I wanted to do was create a sort of a title a title screen that had the, the introduction or the, the intro title what I'm gonna do is let's go to the viewer and to do that now by by default here um, if there's nothing showing in your video it's just a black background which makes sense um, but if I go to the viewer you'll see on the left side of that little window it has some tools one of which is text so I'm going to click on text and then click somewhere in that window and it lets me start typing some stuff in there which will appear as video I mean it won't be moving but it will appear as a, as a several frames a certain amount of time that's just static text there so I was trying to show you what it looked like but of course I want to type something meaningful uh, I'll give you a little bit of advice here I don't actually type anything in directly here for the most part because it has no sort of a spell check <clears throat> But the beauty is since I've already got this typed out in my Word document, I'll just come back. I'll select that text I want on the first page, copy it, come back to hit film, and I'll paste it. And there it is. Let me get rid of that bottom line. Uh, I think what I'd like to do is kind of um, leave a little bit of a space in there. Now, I'll select all the text. I still have the text edit, uh, um, tool selected. Now, down at the bottom left, again, where all these other tabs were, is one that says text. So when I have text selected, if I go to the text tab, I can modify it, can change the typeface. I think the Arial rounded MT bold looks very good. You can obviously choose whatever you like. I would recommend you take something that has a fairly simple typeface, not a lot of serifs, really no serifs on it would be better. Uh, I like this one. I'm gonna make this like uh, maybe 80 points, okay? And then it's clearly not in a very good position, but if I go to layout here, then what I was showing you, and you hit align to the center and then align to the middle, it places it right in the middle of the screen. Um, I'm actually gonna do something else here. I wanna make my title stand out a little bit more. So I might go back and text and make that 100. And you know what, I'll make it 120. Now that's way too big to fit on one line. I'll just come in and hit enter. And then I'll go back to layout again and maybe move back up to the middle. So I like that. That looks pretty good. So that is the first thing that's going to be shown. Let me go back and select. If I, by the way, if I go back and select the arrow here, if you want, you'll see when, this, when you have objects selected, uh, it has like a little uh, axes that are here. If you select the center of the origin of those axes, click and hold, you can move this around manually. And the little red, or excuse me, the blue square, if you float over that, click and hold it, it allows you to rotate text. I don't want to do any of those things here, but I just wanted to show you that as a tool that's available. Now, you might have noticed when I put that there over on the left in this editor, there's this little orange box that showed up. So that's showing a placeholder for how that is going to appear in this video stream. Uh, it looks quite narrow here. I'm going to come down at the very bottom of the editor. There's this uh, little bit of a slider that goes shows basically it's it's zooming in on the timeline. I'm going to right now I'll come over quite a bit to really emphasize this. So here's a placeholder for that text um, entity or element. If I then come back and then move this playhead. I'm mimicking playing through the video. Now it doesn't look like anything's happening and it's really not because it's just static text. It's not showing anything except it's holding a place for that to exist here as the video is playing. So with text you want to decide how long do you want that to display. So what you can do then in the editor if you float over the either side but of course in here I want the um, right side you'll get the little green curly bracket if you click and hold you can drag the duration of this and actually will show you on the preview uh, window so you could select out till it has a certain duration that you want so let's say right here would be about five seconds there's a fair amount of text here maybe I want a little bit more than that you could drag it more or you can right click on the object in the editor you can say speed slash duration and maybe I'll make that um, I don't want to change its speed here necessarily. I'll make it, I think eight seconds might be good for an intro and hit OK and you can see how it changed the length of that. If you want to preview, we do have a video at this point. It's not very exciting, but if you want to preview that, you can move your playhead to wherever you want it to start from. Maybe I go all the way back to the beginning 
over in the viewer I can hit the play button and it will you can see now the playhead is moving in the editor nothing exciting is happening because there's not actually video there it's just a static image but if I were to export this it would be playing a video just again not anything terribly exciting some other tools in the viewer by the way are these uh, frame by frame advancing this again doesn't look like it's doing much this will be a lot more useful uh, later on so I got the first part of this done if you then let's go back and I'll just show you on my storyboard the next thing I wanted to do was I want to have this picture it is just a static picture um, but I want to talk over that while that's shown so let's put the picture in there first which means I need to get the pictures into the program so if I come back to hit film here bottom left there's a tab called media there's a button that says import so I'll click that uh, I happen to have already been to this particular um, folder so that comes up I'm going to hit control a and select everything or however you want to do it just select everything that's in the folder if that's what you want actually let me yeah it doesn't even show the word file but it shows all the videos and images anything that it can recognize as a as an importable object and I'll say open here I'm going to just say import images I don't want to do sequences and it then populates underneath here in the media now let me show you if I, if I come up here and select the trimmer tab that's what the trimmer is it lets you when you click on these things you get a preview of what's there and uh, just as a sort of a foreshadowing here if I click on one of the videos I can actually play the video in the trimmer and you can do here since this is a live video and not live, excuse me not live video but an actual video um, a dynamic video you can actually see the effect of this frame by frame advance or, or reverse that can be very handy when you're trying to select only certain portions but that doesn't do anything as far as putting it yet into our actual <clears throat> timeline it just lets you see what's there but anyway if I come back the image I wanted was this one let me go to the viewer before I forget it was this one that's uh, part way down here so I'm just gonna click hold and drag that onto um, the editor now you can put it right in the same video track you can actually put it in ones above there I'll show you later what that means right now there's no reason why we shouldn't put it right in the same track that the text is in uh, if you move close enough to it it will snap to the end be very careful don't overlap the text that's there because if you do it will delete what's underneath it so I just want to snap it to the end and let go and now that video is in my project here in my my presumptive video if I uh, play this and you can hit the space bar by the way to play this and then start the playback in the viewer you'll see as it gets to the end of the text and then starts running it shows the next picture again that's also static picture so not so exciting but at least you see the concept here the transition okay so far so good let me come back and I'll move my playhead back well I'll just take it doesn't matter where it is right now uh, what I want is I want some voiceover I want to have my speech saying this uh, text that I have and I have a hard copy of my um, uh, what was this called I'm blanking on the name of this here my storyboard excuse me uh, so that I can read from that and I want to record that when I do it so some cases you'll have video that may already have sound in it you may have recorded yourself speaking over something and it's already got the sound in this particular case it's a picture so it doesn't have sound with it I want to create that sound you could actually create the sound in some other program and, and record it in some other program and then import it here but it turns out that it has a pretty good ability to do voiceovers right in hit film express so I do file record voiceover a little pop-up window you can select your microphone um, I'm not going to select the Yeti because that is actually being used to do my screen capture here so I'm going to select I have another one hooked up through my webcam I'm going to select that as the microphone so this is a little weird because I'm recording me speaking for the video but also recording me speaking for this editing so anyway we'll see what happens click the little microphone it'll do a countdown when it ends you can start speaking this investigation uses a custom-built curb track and a go-direct sensor cart from Vernier Science and Technology. To make measurements from the cart, we will also need a computer with Bluetooth capabilities and the free Vernier Graphical Analysis app. The app is also available for most smartphones. So then I'll stop. 
you might have noticed I'm actually going to close this. You might have noticed the playhead kept moving, and that's because as a voiceover, it, you know, the program thinks you want to voice over the video as it's running. So that wasn't really what I wanted. It doesn't matter. The point is that it put, and I'm going to have to zoom back out now on my, on my timeline, it put that WAV file, as is, that's just the format, it started at the playhead where it was, and it just took whatever time it needed to record that. So I'm going to grab that now, and it is in this voiceover um, track, and I'm going to move it back so that it snaps to the beginning of the picture I had. And I want these to match up, so then what I'm going to do is again flow over on the right edge of the picture until I get the green curly brackets, click, hold, and drag that to match the length, the duration of my voiceover, because I want that to be present the whole time I'm talking. So let's go back, and I'll play this back again, and we'll see what we've got. This investigation uses a custom-built curve track and a go-direct sensor cart from Vernier Science and Technology. To make measurements in the cart, we will also need a computer with Bluetooth capabilities and the free Vernier Graphical Analysis app. I'll stop it there. So you get the gist of it. I don't know if you could hear that or not as it was playing back, but there is sound there that was recorded and now is captured in here. It actually appeared on the media tab as well. So really the, the first bit of this entire video I'm creating is just this. It's image after image and then some voiceovers I'm doing. Uh, let's take this opportunity to describe a couple things. Number one, it sees the resolution of the image that I, that I added here as much bigger, it has a much higher resolution, more, more pixels than does the video. So if I put my cursor in the viewer window and with a, with a mouse wheel you can zoom out if I click on the image, you can see it's big. The blue line is the image outline. What actually shows of the image is the size of the video. So the image is too big, much too big for the video panel. So I need to shrink it. If you just click and grab one of the corners, you can shrink that. But notice what's a little not fun here is that the, it, it doesn't keep its aspect ratio and it will warp the image. So to get over that, there's a number of things you could do. You could hold down the shift key and then as you drag while you're holding shift, it keeps the aspect ratio, right? So I could come in here. Let me just let me just shrink it and I'll, I'll let go and then we'll zoom back in. Um, at the bottom right of the viewer window, there is a little magnifying glass, the view settings. If you hit the little pull down arrow and say scale to fit, it'll fit it to the, to the video size, not the image size. So that's better although it's not perfect because now I have these black regions that appear on the side of the image which will show up in the video. What I would prefer is the image is exactly the right width. So you can mess around with that to make that happen or what you can do if you come back to the editor right click on the element here which represents the picture. So I'll right click you can say transform and I don't know it's, it might be hard to see in the video of this of my recording because of the text is going to be small but if you say transform you can say fit the frame width. It will automatically fit that to the right size. Here again you could still grab and move the image manually if you wanted to. right? I can rotate it which I definitely don't want to do. I want to do those things. But you might still want to move it up and down. You can actually click on it and even with your the arrow keys on the keyboard you can nudge it a little bit. I'll move it up a little bit if I want to. So that's better. I can't make it fit perfectly because the the you know the size of the image is just it will not match the the aspect of the the video but I can get in there pretty close here I think what might also be nice to add to this and this is outside the scope of the storyboard but I just thought of this and I think the good opportunity to show you this what if I wanted to add text to this I already added text at the beginning for the intro but maybe I want to add some text near to help to help emphasize some of the things I'm saying so again on the viewer I could go back to the text tool I'll click on that. I'll just click near where I want the text and I'll type in, uh, let's say that I'll, I'll emphasize this is the curved track. Okay, so it comes up quite large, so I'm gonna, maybe I wanna change that. Maybe I'll make that, again, I'll go back to the text edit part. Maybe I'll only make that 100, keep the same font. You'll have to play with this because depending upon what's in the background, um, the color of the font that's there and so forth, you may find that it, it's hard to see the text. You may need to put a box behind it, which isn't too hard to do. If you want to know how to do that, I would encourage you to search online. 
this program, Hit Film Express, seems pretty popular. There's a ton of uh, instructional videos out there if you need help, so I encourage you to check that. I'm actually going to change the color of the font to black because I think that might show up better against the, the table color. And actually, in this case here, there's an outline too, which I'm going to make white, which I really like the look of here. So you'll play around with these things. Don't be afraid to try out other options here. I'll grab my arrow and then you can move that to where you want. So that looks pretty nice on there. Now, now that I've done that, let's look at something that happened in the editor. If go over here to the right. So it made a box for this text. It put it in a different track. And depending on where I move that, again, that's where it's going to show up. If I move the playhead back, you can see where it is. Now, the, some of the sound you hear as I move that, that noise, it's because as you move the playhead, it will play back the sound as well. So that's a little unfortunate here when I'm trying to record. I'll try not to talk at the same time as I move it. Uh, but you can place the text where you want then. So maybe you would want it to be right at the beginning. And maybe you want to stretch it out so it goes a little longer, let's say. Or maybe you wanted it for the whole part of this. But it's important that the text is above the video physically above in the editor. That's why there are multiple tracks here. Watch what happens if I instead move the video above the text. The text is gone. That's because it shows the video on top of the text. Or sorry, not the video, that's a picture. It shows that picture on top of the text. So anything that's above takes precedence. So I want to leave my picture underneath and I want the text on top. Okay, maybe I actually wanted to come in here, I'll select the element I'm going to copy that so I'll hit control C and then I'll hit control V for paste oh let me not do that I gotta unselect it first and I'll hit paste well, that's still giving me a problem here let me try this again copy I think I what I need to do is maybe remove the playhead yeah so it wouldn't let me paste it because what it wants to do is paste the, uh, the the copy of that at the location of the playhead so I gotta move it off to the right so it doesn't overlay anything so if I move that back again now one is on top of the other but I can move it right so maybe I'll move it over here and instead of curve track I'll make it say um, this is the sensor cart Okay, and now the sensor cart is actually on top, that, that text is on top of the curved track text. It doesn't really matter though because they won't, one won't block the other, but it, it is like that. Um, let's see which one is which here. Okay, the one underneath is the curved track. Let me move that, move that up just a bit because I kind of like, I'm, I want to I wanna try something different here. Uh, I want to make this look not animated, but a little bit so it doesn't come in exactly the same time as when I start the, the speech about this. So maybe I'm going to delay the text for the curve track just a bit and then the text for the sensor cart just a bit too. I think that's nice because you're not bombarded with everything right at once. I start speaking a little bit about it, then it brings up the curve track, then it brings up the sensor cart, so it gives a little bit of motion to this in a way. And maybe I'll make the text of the sensor cart add a little bit, end a little bit before the image does, and then the the uh oh. Um, let's say this is going to be my example video. I hope this uh, doesn't crash. It's the first time that's happened. It does. It is going to crash here. Well, I cleverly showed you a good reason to make sure you save as you go along. I should be able to recover everything and let me save that. I hope it did. It's a good time to mention that all of the original files that you brought in I think I need to say that all the original files that you brought in here to this uh, media tab we're using them here we're placing them on the timeline and so forth but no matter what we do here it does not change the original files in the folder all this does is save the project information and fortunately it saved everything so I could recover it let me show you what we've got at this point though so we'll come back start this playing again 
This investigation uses a custom-built curve track and a go direct sensor. So I'm going to stop there. I'm actually going to delay these a little bit further. Because I'd like to say curve track before it actually pops up the text. This investigation uses a custom-built curve track and a go direct sensor. I'm going to go a little bit more. I could be more methodical about this, but I think this will be alright. uses a custom-built curve track and a go-direct sensor card from Premier Science and Technology. Okay, so I like that quite a bit. By the way, when you're doing this playback, sometimes the video could could look a little choppy. The sound might be a little choppy too, just because of the limitations of the computer. I'm on a laptop, which is pretty powerful, but not really. I mean, video editing takes a fair amount of resources. Um, usually, even if that happens, when you export the video, it will play properly and it will be fine. So I'll show you what happens at the other side. Yeah, it's also available for most smartphones. And then it will end. Well, I'll continue on to what's next. So that's what's important about this is it shows you the concept here, the stacking of these uh, video tracks and what that means. And by the way, also be careful because if you have multiple um, overlapping audio and voiceover tracks, they'll play at the exact same time. We should see that happen later on. I'll show you the effects of that. So back to my storyboard, the next picture I had was a detail of the car. So I'll bring that in. Keep that on the same. I'll keep it on the main video one track here. Let me move my playhead over so I can see that in the preview. I've got the same exact issue again that the picture Let's say I'll go right click and say transform, fit the frame width. And so in this particular case, that seems to fit perfectly. So there's the car. I have another voiceover for this, so let me. Now it's going to put the start the voiceover right where the playhead is on the timeline. That's, that's fine, as long as it's not overlapping something. Um, and it's not, it's got space there. So I'll just go and say file, record voiceover. Again, I'll use my webcam microphone. The cart has built-in accelerometers, an optical encoder for position and distance measurements, and a force sensor attached at the hook. We will only use the position measurement capabilities for this investigation. Okay. Close that. Pop-up. You can see where it created the WAV file. I'll bring that in and align it, and then I'll make the duration of the image match. I might shrink out, zoom out just a bit here so I get a little bit more room. Um, let's see, I'm not sure why this text is here. I must have inadvertently copied that, so let me delete that. I do find I, I forget to... Why is that not coming? Remove. There we go. So there's that step. And I'll just continue on. Uh, the next one was another picture, which, where is it? I guess I don't have it in here. I'll connect it. I'll do it. Uh, you know what? Let's do the following. Maybe I'll keep this same picture. What I'm going to do is drag it in here again. But this time I am going to, and it actually it did save that same scale factor. This time, I'm getting some kind of a glitch happening here. This is very odd. Do a transform and let's say frame height. Why is oh I know why. I, I'm being silly. I'm gonna remove this. I gotta go back to my I just assumed it would switch that automatically. It didn't. I gotta go back to my arrow selector here. There we go. And I'll hold down the shift key so I can make this scale. I'm gonna use the same picture, but I wanna I wanna zoom in, I wanna emphasize the connections here. It's a little bit of trial and error because it wants to zoom at the center, centered on the center of the image. So let me do that. 
and then I'll come back and say scale to fit. So that's what's actually going to show in the frame. So from there, I'm going to bring my playhead over again. And the next frame says file record voiceover. Note the power button and other info needed for connecting to the app via Bluetooth. Follow the procedures that were used in previous investigations to connect the cart. Close that. It keeps making new voiceover tracks, even though I'm going to move it up and just continue along. Um, you can remove these empty tracks if you want. And then I'll come back and again, and I'll extend that. So here, again, if I show you, and now I realize something I forgot to tell you. These flip positions here. So let me move that one up. Careful, because if you go over a previous one, it will clip it. I don't want that. I must have clicked on the wrong one. Well, you can see it is pretty easy to rearrange things if you make a mistake, so that's good. And now this one is not right. So this I want to be transform frame width. There. So position and distance measurements and a force sensor attached at the hook. We will only use the position measurement capabilities for this investigation. Note the power button and other info needed for connecting to the app via Bluetooth. Follow the procedures that were used in previous investigations to connect the car. Okay. So far, so good. Then I had a detail of the little wheel underneath, which is this image. I'll come into that. And now I'm going to have to do the same thing again. Let's say transform frame width, because it won't fit the height. And then I can come back, scale to fit. That's what I'll see in the picture. I like that. Let's go one more time to record voiceover. By the way, the optical encoder works with a small wheel in the middle of the cart underneath, which has a set of fine lines as shown. The encoder counts the lines as they pass. The cart's position should be zeroed at the bottom of the track immediately, immediately after it is connected to the app. Now, I had a bit of a stumble there. Ordinarily, what I would do is redo that um, I don't really want to mess with that right now, so I won't, but you certainly could. You could if you wanted to. You could just delete what I just did and redo it easily enough. I'm just going to leave it for the sake of argument here because it doesn't have to be perfect right now. I'm just trying to explain to you how this works, but if I were going to create this video to release it, I would absolutely make sure I didn't have any stumbles or errors like that. Okay. Um, there are other things you could do here. For instance, um, you know, between these two pictures, I have the sort of the, the far out view, and then we zoom in on that. There are transitions are called here. If you go to the effects tab on the bottom left, there are transitions and things like that where you could actually show it zooming in on the picture rather than just manually doing that. Uh, I don't want to do that just because I don't want to kind of complicate things, but if you are so inclined, you can certainly play with that and see how it works. It's actually a very slick sort of setup. Now, here we get to some more interesting things. The next thing I have in my storyboard is an actual video. And it is this video uh, right here, which I'll bring over and place. Now look what happens here when I did that. It actually had um, two things that came along. And I will zoom in just a little bit more on that and move over. Uh, what it did is it brought in the video, the actual image information of the video, and the sound because there was already sound in that one. So now if I play this, so here's what I'm talking about, the video doesn't look right. It actually is not choppy like that. But the sound is correct. You can see the meter showing the, the sound levels and so forth. So it's up to you what you want to do as far as the, the, the volume of that. I want to show you though over in the editor where that sound information is. By the way, when you select one of these, you select both because they're right now linked and that's what the little symbol there like the little chain link 
is doing. But this white bar that goes across on the sound portion of this, if you raise that up and down, you're changing the built-in volume, so to speak. So if I move that down, let me come back and then play it again. You may not be able to hear that, but the sound coming out is much lower. If I raise it back up, Okay, so you're controlling the volume before the user hears it. I'm gonna maybe lower that a bit because I'm gonna add some sound to this of my own. My again, a voiceover. So I'll just place it somewhere in the in the vicinity. I'll go to File, Record Voiceover again. This is an example of what a tech will look like. The cart is raised to a position about halfway up one side of the track and released. It is then allowed to oscillate back and forth as measurements are taken. The data collection can be started at any time just before or after the cart is released. So I'm going to move my voice over up and I'm going to put it right aligned with all of the other sound that's there. So let's see how this comes out. The cart is raised to a position about halfway up one side of the track and released. Is then allowed to oscillate back and forth as measurements are taken. The data collection can be started at any time just before or after the cart is released. Yeah, it's talking a little fast there, but again, I'll just leave it. So there's a little bit of extra time that's in here where the cart is moving when I'm not speaking. That's fine. I'll just leave that as it is. I don't, I don't really care about that. I don't necessarily have to see all of that. Um, but that's all right. I, I don't mind that little bit of an extra amount there. Eventually, I'm going to put some transitions in here so there's not these abrupt cuts. Um, but right now, that's how I'll leave that. So that's pretty good so far. Again, you can change the individual if you want to increase the volume of the of my voiceover and decrease further the volume of the car, which maybe I could do that. I'm realizing I probably should have recorded that voiceover somewhere kind of further down in this editor so that it didn't also, because while I was recording my voice, it was also playing back the sound of the car. So it was sort of redundant there. But again, you can, you can play with that sort of thing. The next thing I have in my storyboard is uh, portions out of this testing video. So before I do anything, uh, I'm gonna come and select that and then go to the trimmer and I'll show you the, the use of that. On my storyboard, I plan to do first some discussion that uses only about the first 34 seconds. I had watched it ahead of time and decided that. So it goes from zero to about 34 seconds. Out of the video itself, I'm not quite sure how long it is, but it's quite a bit longer than that because I just let it run while I was doing a bunch of testing. I knew I'd come back and splice some parts out. Um, and this is where I'm going to take good use of the voiceover because the reason the bullets are here is because I want to say these different things as it's playing and as the different items, so to speak, come up. And so I think you'll see that when I get into it. But let's go back to hit film. I want to set up what I bring. I don't want to bring in this entire, like if I just click and drag this entire video in, it's huge. It's the whole thing, right? It's this very long section of it. That's not what I want. I only want part of it. So I can decide ahead of time here by this by this trimmer. So I'll play it. I'm going to play the actual video now, what's in the video file itself. And actually, I'll, I'll save you a little bit of uh, watching this. I'll jump ahead to close to where I wanted it to be. Like I knew, again, I wanted to go to 3416. So right now it's 3409. I'm in the vicinity here. I'll go to like 3412. If I hit this little button that's that's at the bottom here it says set out point i'll click that and you notice that it kind of and got rid of the orange in the time bar of the trimmer and just kept uh, a smaller portion i didn't hit the in bar the in point uh, because i was starting at zero so what it's saying is right now if i drag from this window i'm only going to get the video between zero and 34.13 seconds or i'm not sure if the 13 is 0 0.13 or 1360ths of a second. I'm not sure. I think it's 0.13 seconds. Anyway, I don't really care. If I click and and in the, the the large view here and drag the whole thing, notice it takes both the video and the sound, and it's a much shorter part. Now there is no sound in this video because I didn't record that. So let me hit undo here. There's other options. If when you float over it in the trimmer, you can actually click where it says use video, click and hold that and then drag and you will only get the video. That's all I really want, so I'm just gonna do that. 
Okay, so that's the use of the trimmer. And there we are in our uh, editor. Let me go back to the viewer. And I'm going to move just one frame at a time here till I get to the beginning. So right about here is good enough. Go a little bit into it. And so from here is where I'm going to start my voiceover. So I want to get my voiceover ready. And I'm going to read different parts of this as it goes along and hopefully I'll coordinate it. If not, I can make some adjustments to it. But I'll start this and it will play when it gets going. Follow the regular procedures for connection and configuration of the data acquisition. Once the cart is found, connect to it. Make sure the sensor channel for position is the only one selected. Reconfigure the data display for a single graph and table. Zero the position channel. Reconfigure the acquisition for 20 samples per second for 20 seconds. And now we're ready to collect data. So there I, I was able to, you could do this in different ways. You could individually record all of those little bullets that I had and then add them into the appropriate locations. Or what worked, I think, really, very nicely with this voiceover is I watched the video as it's playing in the, in the viewer and I spoke when I wanted to. So it made one continuous um, voiceover track here. Let me put that down where it says voiceover. Again, I'm going to get rid of these, uh, delete the empty tracks. Okay, so just to review what we've got. Follow the regular procedures for connection and configuration of the data acquisition. Once the cart is found, connect to it. Make sure the sensor channel for position is the only one selected. Reconfigure the data display for a single graph and table. I'm going to stop here because I think you get the point. I'm not really crazy about the sound that's coming out, um, but that's because, again, I actually have three microphones on my computer right now. I have the, the very nice blue Yeti that I'm doing the recording for the main video, which is forcing me to use my microphone in the, in the webcam, which I'm not really close to. Uh, if you were doing this just straight up and you weren't doing a recording while you're trying to do the, the editing, your sound would probably be much better. So I, I do encourage you to take some effort to get a good microphone, a good kind of sound quality that uh, will, will work better. The last thing I have on this is I have in the um, storyboard is to show a snippet out of the testing video where I do some other voiceover between, well, I'll show you here in the storyboard. Uh, I was going to take out between 35 to 57.16 uh, seconds. I'm actually going to skip that just in, in, to save some time. It's the same exact process. I want to go and show you this outro just to finish things up. So if I come back to hit film, uh, I want to put the, the outro here, which is the exact same thing as I did for the intro. I'm just going to change the text so I can come back. I can select the text that was there, hit copy, control C for copy. Let me move my, my the playhead out here a ways. And I'll hit paste and bring it back to match. And in here, I'm just going to change this to say instead that information. So paste. Maybe I'll make this bigger because it didn't keep the text size. I want people to know who I am. Uh, and again, if you want to, you can change the location of this. And I did have an actual voiceover I was going to do. I think I might skip that as well, where I said, thanks for watching. Yeah, I think I will do it, actually, because that's easy enough. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I'll put that up in my voiceover too. Somewhere in there, doesn't matter where. So that's the basic content. Let me show you just one last thing here to kind of dress things up. Um, if you go to effects, and there is scroll down, transitions, audio and video. The main ones I really want to use is the video. And you can play around with these. I'll just show you the, the concept. I like the fade to color. So I'm going to click hold. And what you're doing is showing transitions between 
clips. And so you can see with my cursor, I'm going to put it and drop it at the title part of these contiguous elements. And it puts this little darker blue um, rectangle there. You can click and actually change their length as well. If I bring back the playhead and just kind of animate this, you'll see what happens. It fades one into black and then back out of black into the next. So it's not quite such a jarring transition. So I'll show you here running. This investigation is a That's pretty nice. You may want to use some similar ones for transitions from audio. So I'm going to come back into my media, or sorry, effects. I'm going to put a fade to color in really in all of these. I wish it would stay. Oh, effects, fade to color. I wonder if I can copy and paste that. I imagine I could. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a way to select that. Nope. All right. There's probably a way to do that. I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to keep doing it the, the manual way here. Uh, you don't always have to use these. I don't always use the transitions, but certainly when they go from you know one sort of major picture, concept, video, whatever, to another, I'll, I'll do it. Fade to color. The color is black here because that's the background color is what that means. Oops, keep clicking the wrong thing. One last time there. And I will, I think, also do a... Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know that I'll mess with it with the, with the sounds. I'll have to wait and see what it looks like. So you could do one last sort of preview here if you wanted to. This investigation uses a custom-built curve track and a gold. I won't make you listen to the whole thing. The cart has built in a I just want to test my transitions. For this investigation. investigation. Note the power button and power button. Like that. The cart. The cart. By the way, the optical input into the app. As an input, it will look like the car is raised. To is raised to mm, something happened there. I don't know if that's real or not. Into the app. Into the app. As an input, it will look like the car is raised to a position about half. So I think I might have accidentally clipped my voice over here. And what happened here? Into the app. Into the app. Yeah, what did happen here? Cross the lines as they pass. The cart's position should be zero at the bottom of the track immediately after it is connected to the app. Okay, so I did not. I'll leave that where that is and see what happens. As an input, it will look like the cart is raised to a position about halfway up one side of the track and released. It is then allowed to oscillate back and forth as measurements are taken. Okay, so I'm glad I did preview that. Something happened when I put some of one. I think my other voice over here. Um, I clipped the one that was already there. So let me redo that one. That was. And I'm glad I have the script for this. That was the um, script that was by my first sort of test video. Uh, so that I don't cut anything else or clip it, I'm going to move this all the way over here to the end. Again, there may be a better way to do this, but this is just one I'm pretty certain works well. So I'm just going to read my script again. Nothing's going to show on the viewer. That's okay. Fortunate this was an easy one. This is an example of what a test will look like. The cart is raised to a position about halfway up one side of the track and released. It is then allowed to oscillate back and forth as measurements are taken. The data collection can be started at any time just before or after the cart is released. So I'm not uh, terribly upset this happened because it'll give me an opportunity to show you how to deal with you know things that come up that you didn't want here. So I'll move my voice over back where it was. I should change it so it has a little bit of a delay. Fortunately, it fits. If it didn't, you could you could change the duration of the picture or the video there. Although that's, that's a little dicey because if you do that, what you're really doing, if you drag it, you have to be careful. You're either going to cut it or you're going to uh, slow it down or speed it up. If you need to do that, you'll have to be careful. I would just refer you to um, either search the help information, watch some of the, the description videos on how to do that, uh, or you could come ask someone in office hours if you needed to. And then I'll bring up my uh, voiceover that I had before. So let's try this again. Zero at the bottom of the track immediately, immediately after it is connected to the app. This is an example of what a test will look like. The cart is raised to a position about halfway up one side of the track and released. It is then allowed to oscillate back and forth as measurements are taken. The data collection can be started at any time just before or after the cart is released. Follow the regular procedures for connection. Okay, I think that's pretty good. 
I do want to show you also, I, let me come in and I'll say one more time, delete the empty tracks. Um, if for some reason you want to do some changes of videos um, outside the trimmer, there are other tools in here. So for instance, uh, maybe I'll come back to the one that shows the, the test with the sound that it has. I'll zoom in just a tad so, so it might be a little easier to see that, what's about to happen. You can right click, so if you put your playhead somewhere where let's say you wanted to, to, to cut a part out, you could put your playhead in a particular location and you could right click and say slice. And I don't know if you noticed, but what that just did is it split that into two videos instead of just one. So then you could delete part of it if you wanted to. That's another way to trim out sections of it. There are other tools over here in the toolbar in the editor that let you do that sort of thing. I don't need to do that, but I just wanted to show you that's another option. So let's say we're all done, we're happy with it now. How do we get this, this produced video out of it? And it's, it's not very long, it's a one a minute and 11 seconds, so yours will be longer than this, but the process will be the same. You'll note there's this export tab. Um, it does show one that I had exported before. Let me say uh, remove the finished task here. You'll likely see it blank to begin with here. And it'll tell you in here that to start an export, you have to export content area or export into out area on the timeline. So basically what it's saying, if you don't already know this or remember this, if you come back to the editor, there's an export button at the top right. Click that. I'm going to say export now and I'm going to say content. So what it's going to do in the background is basically going to take this, these, all these things we splice together now, it's going to play through them and record them as a, as a movie. So I'm going to say export now contents. You'll see it shows me a progress uh, up in this uh, export tab that may not automatically be selected. So you might have to go to the export tab to show it, um, but we'll just uh, watch this go at this point. Okay, so I actually didn't make you watch that whole thing. It took around four or five minutes. I misspoke earlier. I was looking at where the playhead was location, located. It's actually just a little bit, a tiny bit over two minutes long. So when it's done, it will tell you where it is. You can actually click on the link and it'll open it up. I have it in the folder already. Um, I forgot to change the name, or actually I, maybe you can't the way I had set this up for an export, but just calls it editor. Uh, you can obviously change that name afterwards. But I'll show you the finished MP4. This is in VLC Media Player. You might fast forward through it in, in the places. Uses a custom built curve track and a go direct sensor cart from Bernier Science and Technology. To make measurements in the cart, we will also need a computer with Bluetooth capabilities and the free Bernier Graphical Analysis app. The app is also available for most smartphones. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here. The counts the lives will look like. The cart is raised to a position about halfway up one side of the track and released. Is then allowed to oscillate back and forth? So here I wanted to show you that indeed the produced or the exported video was smooth on the from the input video, even though it didn't look that way necessarily on the playback. Those measurements are taken. Reconfigure the data display for a single graph and table. Also notice that I, I made full use of the screen when I was doing this, so as much as possible it could highlight the um, this, the text and the other details of the images and things like that. You want to take good quality pictures, good quality video. Try to use landscape video and not portrait because if you use portrait it's very hard. You're not really taking up much of the, the real estate so to speak in the video unless you zoom in and then it starts to get grainy and so forth. So it's really pretty critical that you, you think ahead about these things as best you can. And, oop, a little too far. There's my, my end uh, credits, so to speak. So that is the video. The beauty of this is if you go back and, and 
preview it when it's all done. If you need to, you can come back into the project. Let me save this actually before I forget. I should have been saving as I go along. Uh, you can open it back up. You can make whatever changes to things, your orders and so forth, and easily um, really edit to your heart's content. So that's the basics of hit film. Again, it's not everything by any means, not necessarily the best way to do things, but I do think it's the simplest sort of set of all the tools. It gives you some very good capabilities with even that minimal set. You should easily be able to do everything you need to do for the project video with this program. Thanks for watching.